Hello, hello everyone and welcome, welcome to the Art of Inspired Selling. Mm. Um, it's Wednesday as normal and today I'm so happy to bring a guest that's going to talk about overcoming obstacles and having success in all parts of your life. Now, as you know, The Art of Inspired Selling is a longer format show where I look for subject matter experts, people that are making a difference in the world to bring them to you, the audience, so that you can learn how to not just survive in this new world, but to th thrive. I want you to hear from experts what they're doing, how they're making an impact in the world, and how you can help support them on their mission or perhaps like the next guest that we have, a not-for-profit that she's working on to bust some awareness for domestic violence. And I want all of you to join in and support that cause because October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So that's another reason why I'm bringing our next guest, Michelle Jewsbury, to the show. So if you have any questions, comments, or want any additional information, the chat's there. We've got people watching. We're broadcasting live on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. So I want you to drop in the chat where you're from. We'll bring your comments on live if we can, if they're appropriate. And we'd be, we're here to serve and we're here to educate. So I'm going to tell you about my next guest, Michelle. Michelle Jewsbury is an international philanthropic speaker and author. She's known for her acclaimed one-person show, but... I love him, which has been tuned in, turned into a memoir about her personal experience in an abusive relationship. Michelle also formed Unsilenced Voices, which we're going to talk about today, to open up the conversation about domestic violence specifically. Unsilenced Voices educates the public about abuse laws while working to shift the cultural mentality to keep silent. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on our guest, Michelle, and there she is. Hey, hello, Catherine. How are you? I'm fabulous. Thank you. And so we have to, I, I should put a little tape block here on my floor so that I don't move. You have all this fancy um, training for actor and I'm like, I have to learn how to stand still and not do all this movement. But welcome. Where are you coming live from today? <laughs> uh, Los Angeles, California, where it's bright and sunny, but cold. <laughs> Yeah, it's, well, you know, it wasn't so cold here in San Diego. Today it was 55 this morning. I went for a bike ride and it felt beautiful. You know, that ocean air and the invigorating um, smell of it. It was just great to be on my bike on the ocean air. So let's talk shop a little bit. One of the questions that I ask my guests when I bring them on this show is as an advocate, as a philanthropic, international philanthropic person, right? business, books, acting, you've done all of these things in your life and you continue to do that to inspire people. What is it that helps you get out of bed in the morning? That not just like, ugh, you know, another day, another dollar. What, what fire in the belly thing that you have that you can share with the audience that has kept you going through all of these resilient opportunities that you've had in your life? So I think it's very important to understand your why. So talking to you out there, listening to us live right now, um, it's very important to keep your why in front of you every single day. So my why is, of course, my nonprofit, but it's the the look in the eyes of the people that I get to help, the, uh, the traveling, the smell, the taste, the, um, the, the sweat of where I get to go. And uh, also, you know, my mentor teaches faith, family, fun. And mm -hmm. I love the fun aspect of life very much. So I love concerts and I love going out and uh, sitting and drinking great wine and eating good food. Uh, but I also love spending time with the family members that I have left. And that's my brother and some uncles and cousins. Um, I think it's so important to remember that the people around you mm -hmm. matter and that they don't always last forever. So I lost my parents uh, a couple years back and 
Now I just remember to spend as much quality time as I can with the people I love. So that's why I work so hard. You work hard so you can play hard. <laughs> I, you know, that's completely my motto as well. And I, I lost two fathers within 60 days of themselves just this year. Mm -hmm. So I totally resonate with that. You know, I've made special trips now to visit those um, elders in the family because you just never know. There's not another excuse yeah. for why you didn't go see them. And also one of the things that I've been working on is making sure people know they matter. Just that extra re reach out. You know, you matter. Guess what? I love you. I love you who you are today and wherever you are today. And I'm not here to change you. I'm here to love you. Yeah. So those kind of things are so important. And I've learned that more and more as uh, I age like fine wine. <laughs> so. Age like fine wine. I love that. Make <laughs> yes. sure you mix in some really good cheese with that as well. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. And you know, my little son wants to be a chef, so we'll mix in some of his pastries. Oh, into that, that. that's, that's yes. lovely. You're making me hungry right now, Kat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still fasting. Uh, I have till 2 p.m. to break my fast. All right. So let's get started. What are you going to talk about today? Let's go into the teachable moment first. And then we're going to break into your passion, which is the, the not-for-profit and how we came into contact with each other. So let's talk about the resiliency and the um, the three deliver, deliverables, encouragement, resiliency, and motivation. Let's talk about those. Give a little bit of your backstory, and then we'll break right into that teachable moment for the audience. Okay, great. So... You may be wondering at home, who is this chick that we're now listening to? So let me kind of uh, give you a short summarized backstory of who I am and what I'm doing now. Um, so I grew up in a small town in North Idaho in the 80s to two amazing parents, my mom and my dad. Uh, God bless their hearts. They're amazing. Uh, love them dearly. And we moved around my whole life. My daddy was military. So I changed schools roughly, I want to say nine different times in my life. Um, but we always remembered that family meant everything. So mm -hmm. my mom and my dad were my biggest cheerleaders growing up uh, with whatever I wanted to do, be an astronaut or an Olympic athlete. Well, when I was about 16 years old, I decided that I needed a real job. At that time, I was babysitting and nannying for two beautiful children. And I asked my mother to train me in the restaurant industry. And she was a manager at the time. So she said, sure. And I actually made more money babysitting at first than working <laughs> in the restaurant industry, which is really funny. Um, so I worked my way up, you know, through the ropes. I ended up spending over 15 years in the restaurant industry. I still love the industry. It's, it's a great way to meet people, to interact. And of course, I love eating and drinking wine. So uh, it was a perfect combination. Well, I knew that I wanted to do something even more. So when I was about 20 one, 20 years old, I decided I needed to pack my car and move my happy little butt from North Idaho all the way to Hollywood, California to be a movie star. That's what I wanted so badly, right? That's dreaming big, right? It is dreaming big. And I want to say something. One of the common threads that you just said that um, goes with a lot of my guests is that we, and myself included, we have this calling, like I know there's something more in the world for me than where I currently am today. Yes. Right. There's I mean. something more. I meant to be more, do more, have more, share my gifts with the world. And, and it sounds like you had that same internal calling. Yes. And that wasn't the first time. So you'll hear another time that that's happened. Um, further along in my story. But yeah, it definitely was a calling. And, and I loved it. I got to Hollywood and I saw the glitz and the glam and the lights. And uh, I, I knew I was home, right? And I thought I was on my way to stardom. Well, about, I want to say the end of 2011, I ended up reconnecting with somebody that I had met years and years ago. And this person started courting me and sending me gifts and flowers and taking me to ball games and other sporting events. And I, um, I fell head over heels in love with this man and we're going to call him Paul. And things were, things were going well. You know, he was an entrepreneur. He uh, was very successful. He was intelligent and uh, things. I thought that this man was the person that I was going to marry. And roughly four months into that relationship, my head ended up going through the drywall. 
And that was the beginning stages of an abusive relationship. And I had no idea what I was experiencing. Um, my mom or my dad, they never even raised their voice to each other. And I never saw any physical altercations whatsoever. I stayed with Paul roughly four years. And during those four years, I endured heavy emotional violence, uh, psychological persecution, um, physical violence, sexual abuse, and financial abuse. And when I finally escaped that relationship, I sat in front of my computer, very similar to what we are doing at home right now, is sitting in front of our computer. And I just started to write, started to type out some things that happened to me. And when I read it back to myself, that's when I had an aha moment. That's when I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe that this is me that I'm reading about. And I knew that I had to do something. I knew that because I was able to speak up and share my story, I knew that I had to do something even more. So in 2016, I wrote and performed a 65 minute solo play about my experience called But I Love Him. People started coming up to me after that and telling me their stories of domestic violence, telling me what happened to them or their mothers or their sisters or their brothers. You know, one in four boys are sexually assaulted. One in four women experience domestic violence. So this is an epidemic that happens worldwide. And again, yes. yeah, and again in my life, I knew I had to do something even more. So in 2017, I founded a nonprofit organization called Unsilenced Voices, which we'll talk more about later. Yes, and I'm going to drop the link to that now while you're talking. Okay, perfect. And uh, we work in Ghana, Sierra Leone, Rwanda, and we're expanding to the United States. So our plan is to do a domestic violence, sexual abuse, and human trafficking awareness tour next year in about nine cities around the U.S., and in 2019, I wrote my first book called But I Love Him, which is um, the true story of the play. So it's exactly what happened to me, changing some names and locations and how I was able to overcome, right, break through some of those barriers, the stigma of being a victim. And then I've been speaking on stages around the world ever since. So I was actually stuck in Egypt, March of 2020, speaking at the Women's Economic Forum, trying to come home uh, after visiting Sierra Leone and Ghana and some of our projects we have overseas when the world shut down. So it was kind of crazy. And then now I've been doing a lot of virtual summits and back out on the road, uh, speaking and traveling. So, so let's talk, yeah. let's talk yeah. just a minute about um, how you help women work through this. So you know, one thing that I didn't realize until you and I spoke, and um, I'm working with Michelle on a project, is that I might not have articulated my story before. And what it made me think is that people sweep it under the carpet. Like they might have had their head put through drywall. Or in my case, the guy grabbed my throat ran me down the hallway, slammed me against the door, and then used my head as a punching bag, right? So I didn't, I haven't ever really talked about it because it's just like, well, it's just something that happened and I'm going to move on, mm -hmm. right? And I'm just wondering how many women that you speak to have had these repeating cycles of things that have happened once and they were like, well, uh, if, if it happens again, I guess that's just me. That's just me. I'm just the person that can be used as a punching bag. That's my self-worth. That's all I'm good for, you know? Tell, tell me a little bit about, in your coaching business, how you're helping women break through and find that strength to overcome those situations, to love themselves, to overcome the obstacles, to come out and to speak and to be so comfortable in their own skin that they can make a difference in the world. So it's quite interesting how many individuals I meet that they've experienced some type of trauma in their life and then they brush it off like you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they they pop up their collars and say, I'm OK, it's fine. I'm going to brush it under the rug. Well, there's something called adverse childhood experiences okay. where if you experience a trauma or something psychologically um, severe growing up, you could be a child, an adolescent even a late teen or early adult, and experience something that 
impacts you negatively mm -hmm. and you decide to ignore it. You decide to say this happened, but I'm not going to embrace it or talk about it. It comes out in physical and or emotional ailments when you get older. So we're talking autoimmune disorders, chronic fatigue and diseases, uh, anxieties and stresses, um, overeating, over drinking, uh, you name it. There are multiple things that can happen when you push your feelings under the rug. So the reason that we see a repetitive cycle in women specifically still going back to the same type of man who continues mm -hmm. to abuse and manipulate is we personally haven't dealt with what has happened to us. So we teach a philosophy, feel in order to heal. We have I'm going to type that in the chat here. Yeah, great. Feel in order to heal. Okay. We have to feel through our emotions, right? We have to feel through things that have happened to us. So for example, in my abusive relationship, when I escaped, and we'll get into some education points in a little bit, uh, but I had to um, go through the pain and the agony of feeling through some of those things. Um, I remember performing my play and having to repeatedly rehearse it day in and day out. I threw myself around on the stage. I beat myself up on stage. I played multiple characters, uh, one being a, a psychologist that would encourage me. And when I was able to rehearse this over and over and over again, I started to feel better, right? I started to feel like, okay, I'm getting this out of me now. So I can actually make some room for some positivity to come into my life. And that's where you have those breakthroughs of, oh, wow, I'm, I'm better than, than this. I mm -hmm. deserve even more than what I have now. I, I deserve an even better relationship. And you start to appreciate yourself even more. And then you start to appreciate the people around you even more. So you recognize the negative or the red flags in individuals. Um, and you start to recognize the positivity in some others that you may not have noticed before. So that's kind of how we stop that cycle. Um, in coaching, you know, it's a that's an application process, of course, but through private coaching, we help you turn your pain into some type of business, ministry, mission, movement, nonprofit, or help your current business flourish by you overcoming the barriers that are stopping you. So that's that's all great. And so we'll I'll, you guys, I'll, I'll put um, Michelle's. Uh, no, I'm going to do that now. Her website in case so somebody. Unsilencemyvoice.com. <clears throat> it's here. No, it's not. Okay. So keep talking and I'll type that and then I'll put it in the chat. Yeah, no problem. Um, so when you go on to unsilencemyvoice.com, there's a couple of different options. Um, we have a 10 module series to help you break through challenges. We conquer barriers, elevate your perspective, and we dive into the transformation process. Mm -hmm. That is um, a masterclass. And we also have an intensive, which is a um, six or seven module series after that, along with the private coaching that we do as well. So uh, you can get more information at unsilencemyvoice.com. Um, and then you can also book an appointment with me uh, so we can talk, see if uh, this is a great fit for you and see how I might be able to serve you. Yeah. And so everyone, I just want you to recognize that, you know, it's a safe space to explore things that you might have had hidden in the past. Because um, one of the, the cliches that I continue to say is you have to know yourself to grow yourself. Mm -hmm. And you have to know those self-limiting beliefs and the things that are inside you that might be holding you back for the words, some of the words that I, you know, for a quantum leap, like I, I'm making the same amount of money over and over and over again, or I pick the same people over and over and over again, those repeatable insanity moments. If there's someone that can help you break through those to move, to be your best self, right? That's my why, is to bring people to you and to help people become the best version of themselves to be, do, and have all that they were meant to be. That, you know, that's my mission. That's my why. And so that's why I bring these fabulous people like Michelle to you so that you can, you can connect and resonate and heal and move and just explode into that beautiful, creative, serving being that you're meant to be. So, it's Keep interesting. Going. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's interesting that you just talked about um, insanity, right? Because the definition of 
um, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is insane. You have to change, right? You And change is sometimes a, a difficult word for people. So it's just learning who you are, right? Just like you talked about, Catherine. Mm-hmm. And, um, and really understanding if you put work into you and you put work into the things that you believe in, um, your business, your mission, your movement, whatever that is around you, then things start to grow, right? Financially, you become even more independent. Uh, you start to take even more trips, spend even more time with your friends and family. So it's very, very important to recognize some of these key issues that you may be faced with. Yeah. Yeah. And so do you have a exercise that we can talk about today? So someone might be able to recognize one of those key issues, like before they come to talk to someone like you, like, is there a free writing exercise or some quadrant they can use, or is there something they can use to say, you know, what areas of my life do I, or do I want to improve all of them? And what's holding me back? What are some of the simple tools, because that's what people need, right? We need tools to be able to return back to them to be able to grow. Yeah, so what definitely. what's something you work with? You use? So, so uh, we have developed a five steps to overcome challenges. So we'll talk even more about them, but I'd love to gift this to your audience. So anybody in the United States, all they need to do is text the word UNITE, U-N-I-T-E, to 26786. Again, it's text UNITE. UNITE, U-N-I-T-E. Yes. To 26786. And they'll receive a digital download of five steps to overcome challenges. Now we teach on this and um, the five steps first recognize thoughts, feelings, words, and actions. And we'll dive into that a little more, I'm assuming here in a couple of minutes. Uh, But we also, when I speak live, we have a sheet. Um, It's a breakthrough masterclass sheet. It's a coaching sheet. It's what you need. So it's kind of diving into the challenges that you're faced with having you recognize the challenges that you're faced with, and then giving you an answer to help you break through those issues. So for example, a lot of people get stuck in step one, recognize, right? Understanding what it is that you've gone through and how it's impacting your life, either negatively or positively. Mm -hmm. And uh, we dive into a lot of coping mechanisms, talking about the skills required to break through barriers without going to negative coping skills. Those negative copings could be um, overeating, could be over drinking, drugs and alcohol, shopping, um, shopping you name it, right? I yes. love that you jumped into shopping. I uh, don't do that, but yes, I have nice yeah. people. I'm a I good mean, will girl. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm a shoe girl. So I actually, so I. Uh, my office is in my closet. And if I showed you my shoes behind me, you'd laugh. But um, yes, I I love shoes, um, but it's not conducive to continue going out and buying Christian Louboutin shoes if you want to be financially successful and build a life for you and the family around you. Um, So really, it's kind of diving in to figure out some of the the key issues, whether it's abuse, neglect, um, anxiety. 50% of entrepreneurs deal with a mental health condition. So why do we deal with that mental health condition? There's always some underlying reason why we're faced with the challenges that we are today. This is very stigma because it's talked about a lot, but what you've done 10 years ago has led you to where you are today. Mm -hmm. So if you change what you're doing now, then 10 years from now, you're going to be in a different place. And that different place could be a positive place. If you invest in yourself, could be a negative place if you choose to disregard your feelings and and um, surround yourself with people that you sit with after work that drink Bud Lights and tell you that you're not going to succeed in, in a business venture or a nonprofit or any type of movement. Right, right. Surrounding yourself with those people that help you feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Right, definitely. that aren't challenging you. Like, mm-hmm. oh, you've got kids, you're, you've got a family, don't go out on your own. <laughs> like not at this time of your life, right? Those were some of the things that I heard when I was launching out on my own for my own business. So yes, making sure that you're spending time with people that are reaching up and reaching down, right? They're yes. headed up and they're taking you with them because mm-hmm. they truly can, 
they care about your success and where you're going in the world. So those yeah. are always great, great people. And this is mentor month as well, I think. So shout out to all the great mentors in the world. Okay. So that was step one we talked uh, about. Yeah. What, yeah. What's step two? So step two is thoughts. So uh, Henry Ford said, whatever you think you can or you can't, you are right. So it's uh, listening to amazing podcasts. It's listening to audiobooks, reading audiobooks, surrounding yourself like you're talking about with the right people. Because if you listen to your Uncle John or your Aunt Sue down the street telling you you're not going to be successful, you start to think they're right. Now you have to learn to limit disbelief. So what what I mean by that is... I like that. You, I'm going to drop that also in you, the chat. You need to learn to... Um, not listen to those types of naysayers. They don't have the life you want to live, so why would you listen to them? So mm -hmm. if you want to have a wonderful, beautiful life that you deserve and you know that you deserve even more time, even more things to do what it is that you want to do, even more money, then belief in yourself is essential. And in order to get belief in yourself, you have to change your thinking. So we teach... Um, we teach writing exercises, a lot of writing exercises. Um, a lot of that is stream of consciousness writing. Um, I some love other stream things. of consciousness writing, right? right? The, the, the nuggets come out in that free form writing. I love it. Yeah. And if you don't know what that is, you seriously will just take a pen to a piece of paper and start writing whatever it is, is in your head. It doesn't have to make sense. Could be single words, could be sentences. You could go from, I need to get this at the grocery store to, I can't believe this happened to me 30 years ago. Um, but just getting it out of your head will start to clear space for you mm -hmm. and for you to have positive thoughts, right? So it's, it's all thinking, right? Destroy those limiting beliefs. Um, choose your thoughts daily. So this is so important. A lot of people don't realize that thoughts are a choice and that we can actually analyze our thoughts and don't allow our thoughts to analyze us. We can step back and say, hmm, that's interesting. You're thinking like that. Let's dive into why, right? And when you choose your thoughts, it's like choosing your spouse. So I don't know if you're married out there at home, but sometimes I know people wake up and um, they're a little aggravated because they got a rough night's sleep because your spouse, or your partner were snoring all night. And you still have to choose every morning to love that person. You have to choose every day to still want to be with that person. It's the same thing with choosing your thoughts every day. That's great. That's great. Okay. What's number three? Okay, so first was recognize, second thoughts, third step is feelings. So we're going from our head to our heart, right? So when you dive into your feelings, we talked about this earlier, you have to feel in order to heal. And then you have to feel through your pain. And you have to learn to be able to express yourself. So we have a lot of clients who um, they feel pretty crummy right now. And uh, if you're feeling pretty crummy at home and you want to go on a hike and start screaming at the sky or want to take a pillow and scream into that pillow, then do it. Uh, my, our advice is to actually feel your feelings because when you disregard them, that's when issues start to come up. That's when uh, the autoimmune disorders, that's when the chronic fatigue and diseases mm -hmm. start to come up is because you don't get to actually express yourself. And this also includes expressing yourself to those around you in a positive, productive way. So if, if you're if you get triggered easily into verbally assaulting or physically assaulting somebody, my recommendation is to take a break, go for a walk and come back when you can have an adult conversation instead of lashing out. But that that walk is doing something right. Mm -hmm. It's actually helping your feelings and your emotions settle, because when we're triggered, we're on high alert the entire time. And if you're in an abusive relationship, the walking on eggshells stage of your relationship, you're always on high alert. Yes. So you're not able to feel your feelings. You're just always making sure I don't want to trigger him or her because right. I don't want them to lash out. You're right? in reactive mode. And exactly. also, you know, if that person is a narcissist, it's like, how, how am I going to best serve them? to prevent that explosive situation mm -hmm. again. 
Yeah. Right. Exactly. So you lose yourself in that situation. I'm 100% speaking from experience, right? Yes. So yes. you lose yourself and everything becomes about them. Yeah. Or, yeah. and it, you know, it could be a person, it could be a job. It could be, it could be all different types of, of uh, situations. Yes, it can be all kinds of different situations, but uh, learning to express yourself in a positive way uh, will impact those around you. And then they will also in turn learn to express themselves in a positive way. So it's like the Miriam Williamson quote, your light, shedding your light will help other people to shed their light as well, to Mm -hmm. shine bright, right? Um, So learn to feel through pain. And that's number three. So should I dive right into number yes, four? Okay, yes. so, so number four is words. So first was recognize thoughts, feelings. Four is words. So using positive power words. Uh, like I said earlier, we teach a lot of writing. So what we use here is we encourage you to use post-its or even lipstick on your bathroom mirror and write out positive words. I am words. I am statements. I am worthy. I am beautiful. I am Mm -hmm. enough. Um, There's an organization led by a woman named Megan. Uh, It's I am enough movement. She's absolutely phenomenal. But you have to learn to teach yourself how to use these positive words. So this is subliminal messaging. So subliminal messaging, what that is, is say you're on your way to work, and you're, you're driving, it's nine o'clock in the morning. I mean, that's late for work, but say it's nine <laughs> o'clock in the morning. We're running We're in Southern California and we sing Kumbaya in the morning. So come we on. We do, right? right? <laughs> um, but say you see a, a McDonald's sign and that McDonald's sign, it doesn't come to your conscious awareness, but your subconscious has picked it up. So you get to work, you're working, all of a sudden you look down and it's like 1230 and your stomach starts to rumble right? And you're like, I'm hungry. You start to think about McDonald's French fries. Why does that happen? Because your subconscious picked that up earlier in the day. So if you write post-it notes and put them all around your house, I am, um, I can succeed. Uh, This business will be successful. I will be a multimillionaire. You name it, whatever that you want to put around you, do that because your subconscious picks it up every day. So in your office, um, in your car, in your bathroom, um, all over your house, kitchen, you name yes. it. Um, and then you start to believe some of these things, these words that have been used on yourself and you've then just subliminally messaged yourself. And then a lot of people say, fake it till you make it. It's not fake it till you make it. It's learning to feel through things, learning to to do the right activities so you can actually make it because you're not a faker. Yeah. I want to drop a tool for you guys. Um, I, I love writing with um, markers on walls and mirrors, you know, just a fleeting thought on sticky notes everywhere. But um, I have found an app that's called manifest. I'm not an affiliate for it at all. But they send every couple of hours um, positive manifestations on my phone because that's where I am most of the time, right? But it's there's an alarm. So we always, we have these alarms that we use for Facebook and for LinkedIn or whatever, which is just noise garbage. But what about um, subscribing to some type of type of app or something where you can, I trust myself on this path towards achieving my dreams and you can make your own mantras and it can serve them up to you on different timelines. So I really like this app. Um, Once again, it's called manifest and um, it helps me because I I hear it. And now it's like Pavlov's dog. What, you know, what's the next positive mantra for the day? That's wonderful. I've been using that and I stop myself and I make it, I make myself say it out loud. Oh, and I good. might, I might even write it and put it into a post and then tag manifest, you know, to just like, kind of say, I'm, I'm with you on this. Uh, and, and that's just my expression of, um, voice is written form and, and graphic form. So those are some of the tools that I'll, I'm just sharing with you guys that I've been using lately to help with my positive mindset. Yeah, no, it's wonderful because anything that you can use, uh, utilize for positive mindset, uh, for growth, it will help you even more. So mm-hmm. uh, I, I just enrolled in an app called Oola, O-O-L-A. 
And I'm doing that with a couple of speaker friends of mine. And it's all about tracking your progress, right? Really being goal driven and oriented, um, understanding that you have to then lead into our fifth step, right, is action, right? You need to be able to do some action steps in order for you to achieve your dreams and your goals. And a lot of those action steps also include therapy, whether it is traditional mm -hmm. or non-traditional types of therapy, being able to, like I said, express yourself. I don't think that I've emphasized that enough, um, but it, it really kind of helps you track your success. So with action steps, there are many different things that you can do. Um, action is, of course, putting into place all of the right tools that you need for your business. Uh, a lot of that is, you know, get your book cover done, get on Harrow, which is help a reporter out, uh, be seen more, be on interviews like this, watch interviews like this, mm -hmm. um, you know, listen and read great books, um, get outside and take care of yourself, exercise, don't run a marathon if you're, if you're not, if it, <laughs> I, I'm not running a marathon, I'm going out and I run about a mile, or you go for a walk, you know, you do right. what you can, but get out and get some fresh air. Um, learn to sleep, right? Don't uh, don't be up until two o'clock in the morning and then waking up at six. I know people that do that. Get good sleep. The average amount of sleep, I think, is like six hours for Americans, and we're supposed to have eight. Um, my, my sweet spot is nine, but it's very rare to get nine. So, so my goal is always eight, right? Um, but take care of yourself, because if you're able to take care of yourself, brain and physical health, um, then you're then able to conquer some of the barriers that you have in front of you. Mm -hmm. And then you can implement all of the tools that we teach you in order for you to have even more success, massive success in your personal and your professional lives. Yeah, that sounds great. It sounds awesome. great, guys. Yay, Let's do it. Great, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so let me drop that. Also, the tools that we were just talking about. Um, this one, I'm going to, it's Oola, Oola. What is Oola. it? O-O-L-A, Oola. And okay. if you want more information um, about that, you can also contact me. Um, again, if you go to unsilencemyvoice.com, okay. you can book some information or, excuse me, book some time with me for some more information. Okay. And I think I can even, uh, where is that link for your calendar? Oh, Calendly link. Yeah. Well, uh, set an appointment right here. Sure. Yep. Set an appointment. That's what it is. Uh huh. So anyway, you guys can find it on Unsilence My Voice. There's not a separate. Just just go to the the website and um, scroll down to the right. It says set an appointment, so yep, that you can perfect. you can find that. All right, so let's move over. We're not. I don't want to rush, but now we want to talk about unsilenced voices, yep. about domestic violence awareness, and about the gala that we're working on that we're going to feel and like have people spilling over into the the um, vestibule. Let's let's talk about that for just a second. And you guys, I'm going to drop the link to that as well. December 8th mm -hmm. um, in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. I will put the link while Michelle talks about it. Perfect. So uh, Unsilenced Voices, we are fundraising for a National Domestic Violence, Sexual Abuse, and Human Trafficking Awareness Tour. I briefly talked about we're planning on being in nine cities around the United States next year. Well, in order to do that, we have to fundraise for it. So December 8th is going to be this gala where we have amazing people coming. They former attorney general of the state of Nevada will be there. Uh, we'll be sharing and speaking. We'll have Greg Reed. We'll have Teresa Goss. We've got Bill Walsh, of course, coming and speaking. Sean Callagy from Unblinded will be there. And plus, we've partnered with the NFL alumni in Las Vegas. So we have roughly seven NFL alumni coming and sharing their story on an NFL panel. Plus, we'll have... Um, Assigned uh, paraphernalia, signed um, not paraphernalia, signed signed things from the NFL players. Uh, Lee Steinberg, who is the agent to Patrick Mahomes, mm -hmm. he is actually offering two tickets to his Super Bowl party, which is absolutely amazing. His Super Bowl party has been visited by so many amazing individuals throughout the years. Um, auctioning the two tickets to that off as well. So it's going to be a beautiful event. Uh, we are going to have dinner, 
you get to dress up. I know during 2020, we couldn't dress up. So I know a lot of us at home, uh, especially women, we want to put on that beautiful dress. Yes, we do. We want to put on heels, right? And then you'll be catered to. It's going to be an event. We'll have entertainment and dinner and cocktails. So make sure to, to be there. Uh, Catherine put the link in the live stream here. Uh, tickets are only 299 bucks. If you buy two tickets, then they're only 250 a piece. So 500 bucks for two tickets. And you can also buy a table. And if you wanted to be sat at a VIP table with some of the amazing speakers and or football players, uh, that VIP ticket is only 500 bucks for a single ticket. So you can go on that Eventbrite and get more information. You can also go to unsilencedvoices.org mm -hmm. and get more information about the event and about Unsilenced Voices and what we've been doing the past couple of years. Okay, here's that link for that. Um, and also we're looking for sponsors right yeah. so we're looking for sponsors for the event we um if you go to eventbrite there um that's another link i can put in the show notes after i can also upload the different sponsor packages that we have available for you guys so um lots of ways to get involved lots of ways to support this worldwide movement mm -hmm. and um also you can contact michelle you can contact me if you have any um ideas right as the nine city tour goes on resources ways to get involved if you are um the executive director of a not-for-profit that is in line with this you know we can talk about you how we can put those two together to, to reach more people, to create more awareness, to get I'm funds. Glad, yeah. I'm glad that you, you, you're you saying that, Catherine. So what we want to do is in those nine cities, we want to partner with an existing organization within that city that provides a, di a direct service to survivors. So during our educational seminars that we're going to be doing in each one of these cities, uh, we're going to have partner organizations there. We're going to have case managers there. We'll have police officers there uh, so people can file restraining orders. So people understand the legalities of leaving a, an abusive relationship, how to get back on their feet, um, child care assistance. I mean, that's a huge one. So if you are an organization in a major hub, so we're talking Atlanta, uh, Orlando, Miami, uh, Las Vegas, San Francisco, um, you name it, like major hubs, New York. Um, we can partner together. Unsilenced Voices provides the funding for this event. It will provide even more awareness for your organization as well. Mm -hmm. And then it will be a win-win, right? We'll be able to impact even more survivors uh, while also joining forces together because it's so important to work together because if two people are working on the same things, when you join together, you get even more work done. And that means you can impact even more people. Yes, and how about volunteers for those mm -hmm. events? Are we looking to um, sign up volunteers and train them and work with them? How can people get involved other than through donations? Yeah, we definitely do need volunteers. A lot of the volunteers at this moment um, is gonna be geared and focused towards the December 8th event. So more awareness, reposting Unsilenced Voices posts, reposting about our upcoming events. Uh, as far as volunteering at those specific events, we'll need um, ushers. We're going to need um, uh, assistants, people who can help with random things here or there, you know, uh, people to um, be able to talk to survivors. So we'll have mm -hmm. to go through an educational course on how to speak to a survivor and not trigger them or victimize them. A lot of people blame the victim for things that have happened. And if, if you're a former victim, that's never your fault. I don't care uh, what anybody's ever told you. It's never your fault for abuse of any kind. So uh, we definitely need more of that. Um, so if you do have questions, want to contact me, there is a contact forum on unsilencedvoices.org. But the best way to contact me directly is going to unsilencedmyvoice.com and booking a time with me online. Okay, and I'm going to share the press release in the notes as well, so you guys can post that, share it out, get the get the the message out to people. And um, any questions, um, Michelle's available. She's busy. I'm available. Other board members are available. Le drop us a message. We'd be more than happy to connect with you to make this happen. Yes. Right. 
Yeah, yes. definitely. <laughs> yes. All right. So I want to thank you so much for coming on today. We covered a lot of things. As you guys know, the Art of Inspired Selling is going to be an evergreen after the recording um, or after the live show, the recording is there for you. I just noticed that um, Restream has some new requirements. I'm sorry I didn't go through them so that on Facebook, you guys aren't able to make to drop messages. So drop them in the chat after the show ends and we'll respond to you. And um, I'll make sure that Michelle gets eyeballs on any of those questions or um ways you want to get involved or anything. So, and then we're going to go live again next month to talk a little bit more about how things are going, about how ticket sales are going. We want you guys to get in the buzz, get in the fill and be able to support us on this mission to bring awareness to domestic violence. So awesome. any closing thoughts, Michelle, before we wrap the show? So I, I end with this a lot. Uh, one of my favorite movies is Finding Nemo and uh, Dora sings, just keep swimming all the time, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. And it, it's it's a funny quote, but it's so relevant because when you've overcame stuff, then that means you kept swimming. When you're still stuck in those circumstances and allowing those circumstances to define who you are, mm -hmm. allowing your mentality to be shaken because of things that have happened, then you're stuck. So I encourage you to just keep swimming, just keep going because life will get better. Yes. Change your story, change your life. Right. Yep. 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 For sure. All right, you guys, thank you so much for tuning into the art of inspired selling. Normally we show, we go live on Wednesdays at one o'clock Pacific time. If you have a specific topic you would like to hear more about as it pertains to social selling or B2B sales, hit me up. If you want to be a guest on the show, reach out to me. We can talk about a topic because we're here to change lives and to help you be the best version of yourself always. So thanks so much, Michelle. Stay on. I'm going to end the show, you guys. Thank you so much Thank for you. being here.